Please be advised, this podcast contains descriptions of gun violence. We heard something that sounded like a roller coaster over our head, but it turned out it was people running. It was kind of like free for all. I counted six, uh, six gunshots. Um, don't really know the direction they were coming from, but um, a lot of people started running my way. Um, and once I heard all six rapidly, I started to run too. On Black Friday 2021, one of the busiest shopping days of the entire year, shots were fired in a Durham, North Carolina mall called the Streets of South Point. Three people were wounded in the gunfire, including a suspect in the shooting. Um, The three individuals, um, one of those is a 10-year-old juvenile, um, and they are, uh, they were transported to the hospital with non-life-threatening Even when there aren't fatalities, These shootings, these now ordinary shootings, have an extraordinary impact. Uh, You know, certainly shootings in this city have got to stop. It's got to stop. It's got to stop. I'm investigative documentary reporter Kristen Severance. I work for WRL News. And the voice you just heard is Durham's police chief, Patrice Andrews. Chief Andrews and I have something in common. We both started our jobs just weeks before that Black Friday mall shooting. I remember that day. I had just finished my shifts, I was writing, and I was home with my two kids. My husband, Dan, is an anchor at WREL, so I had the TV on. Continue to follow now this breaking news out of Durham. Police are working to evacuate South Point Mall as we speak after reports of shots fired. This, of course, was a huge story. It was breaking news. We had every crew covering that story. Reporters were live outside the mall. The chopper was overhead. We had a reporter in the live center. I remember him interviewing different people and city leaders live on the air. This became hours and hours of coverage. It's called wall-to-wall coverage in the news business. And I remember hearing Chief Andrews respond to the shooting. She sounded so just fed up. And so when I spoke with her a few months and many shootings later, that feeling hadn't faded. It's not as simple as as saying stop. You know, I know that, and I'm certainly not naive to that. Um, and and it is. It's it's frustration. So I'm, you know, obviously I'm pretty just frustrated that we've gotten to this point in the city of Durham. But you know that that we're at this point nationwide that we've gotten to this point, and then you start to think, you know. Where did we go off the rails? You know, where where did this where did this go wrong? I'm part of the WRAL doc unit. This podcast is a companion to our TV documentary Durham Under Fire. If you haven't seen Durham Under Fire, make sure you check it out at WRALDocumentary.com and on WRAL's YouTube page. This podcast series will give you a chance to get to know the voices featured in the doc in a more in-depth way. You'll spend time getting to know families impacted by gun crime, community activists, city leaders grappling with how to address the violence, and the underlying issues that really contribute to the devastation. You'll hear from people trying to get guns and offenders off the streets about why they do the work they do, what motivates them, and what keeps them from giving up even when things are bleak. These are people that respond to gun violence on any given day, even in the middle of an interview. When we come back, the chief responds to shots fired. All right, Chief, can I ask you a couple questions? Sure, sure, okay. for sure. So will you just start with your first and last name? Sure, Patrice Andrews, P-A-T-R-I-C-E-A-N-D-R-E-W-S. Chief Andrews let me ride along with her in a patrol car. Now, the Durham Police Department is big. They have a budget for more than 530 officer positions. It's not typical for the chief to drive a patrol car, but they're facing huge staffing shortages and the chief and other high-level managers are chipping in. Of course, Andrews didn't start her career as chief of one of the biggest police departments in the state. 
She started in the Durham PD 25 years ago and rose through the ranks before she left to become the police chief in nearby Morrisville. It's a smaller town, and she really had the time to focus on the people, getting to know the people. There wasn't always that next call coming in. But Andrews also felt the pull back to Durham. And then an announcement came in April 2021. Durham's police chief is moving on to a new job. C.J. Davis will become the new chief in Memphis, Tennessee. Now Davis's appointment still needs to be approved by city council in Memphis here in Durham. Well, city leaders say the search for the new police chief begins now. And and the announcement came out that obviously C.J. was leaving and they had the vacancy here. Um, I did try to ignore it. I said, I'm, I'm fine, I'm just going to, this is where I'm going to end my career. I'm gonna stay in Morrisville. I'm just gonna end my career here. But there was with something within me that says, you need to, you need to apply, you need to go home. You need to go home. It's just a different feeling to be here. Just a different feeling. Yeah. And so why do you think, or why can't officers here focus on the community like the officers in Morrisville could? So I, I, it, there, there is the, the call volume. You know, it's, it's, it's very much, and, and our officers really do try to take that extra bit of time to do more. Um, but it's it's that that call. It's going. It's call. Clear up. Go. Clear up. Go. Take your call. Clear up. Go. As we're talking, a call comes in. Yeah. You want the best people. What's the address on that? Is it okay? We'll head over there. So this is a shots fired, shots being fired at the Carico. Um, and and um, it's a sound of shots. One shot. All right. Ten for copy, one shot. So on this one, we'll do, we're going to assist with scene security. And what did it say? It said, is it was one person shot? Yeah. Not sure how bad or where right now. I've been a reporter for a long time now, 17 years. And I've been on police ride alongs all over the country. Florida, Ohio, California, Texas. You could spend hours and hours, days with an officer and not see any action. But when a call like that comes in, the whole vibe changes in the car. Everyone gets quiet. Your adrenaline kicks in. And it's serious. I mean, you're on your way to a shooting with the police chief, and you have no idea what's going to happen next. About 45 seconds out, maybe. About your perimeter, there's school kids everywhere. Yeah, I copied that. No, I wasn't sure. Hey, look, how belated from the time you were able to get to it? You think minutes or seconds? Yes, I was inside the school and we heard shot. All right, I'm going to continue on that. It's down. the one right here by the laundromat. Yes, ma'am. Car one, code eight. Hey, what's that house again? Six. Leaving out Six. Right. Stay. They got EMS yeah. Come on in. I could see the chief interviewing witnesses, but then a big fire truck pulled in and kind of blocked our view. We did see other television crews start to arrive and cover this, including a reporter from our station. After maybe 20 minutes, she got back in the car. (sighs) Wow. That was tough. Okay. And there were people all out there. You know, what we know is there, there was a bunch of people out there. And when the shots were fired, they just... 
everyone scattered, but but there were also there were people there that had small children. There were people there that laundromat that's right next door is so I've been to that laundromat. I went to that laundromat a couple of weeks ago. You know, cuz that's where, you know, you go there, you have something oversized, that's one of the best laundromats ever. <laughs> But just thinking that in broad daylight, it's 117 and this happens, you know? And, and Kelly 324. That the victim, or was he taken to the hospital or? Yeah, yeah, he's, he's on his way to the hospital. I don't know where he was, um, where he was shot at. I mean, it sounds like it's a, it's, it's a single gunshot wound. And so, but you see how when something happens, the amount of manpower or person power, or officer power that goes to that scene, but the radio doesn't stop. There's always other calls. Um, the radio just doesn't stop. And so whenever I was looking at all of the holding calls, um, you know, I saw that there was, there was a whole list of holding calls holding whole list. When we come back, more reaction from Chief Andrews. Life in Durham, like many places in the country, doesn't feel safe for so many residents. And the police department is stretched. I feel the urgency, right? Again, Durham Police Chief Patrice Andrews. So when that call comes out, how quickly everything happens. So from just an operations standpoint, so I've got to hear the radio, I've got to work the, th and I've got to listen to this, and I've got to, I've got to be aware of everything that's happening. I've got to reset, you know, the, the, the siren, and I've got to make sure my body works. All of these things that are happening in an officer's mind. And then they're, at the same time, they're trying to prepare themselves for what they might see as they're pulling up, as they're getting on the call. Okay, so what do we need to do? What do we need to do? What do we need to do? But then it's then it's the actual call itself. It's the, here we go. Here's, an, here's another shooting. You know, and, and just constantly just questioning why, why, why? And the officers themselves they always say, I don't want to get desensitized. I don't want to get desensitized. So they're very aware of getting desensitized to it. And for me today, j even in just this short time, it's all of those things. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. And I needed to be reminded of that, how much it is on our patrol officers. And then being able to shift and in, you know go to a, a house alarm going to a call that, that isn't a gunshot wound, but going to something that, you know, you're, you're needed in a different way. How do you turn that off, you know? It's, it's, the, it's being able to mentally shift. I just don't understand how our officers are able to do it. I know they do it, but how they're able to do it is just amazing to me. And, and then just why are you letting us do this? Like, why do, why say yes? Mm. I, I, will, I will tell you that we have to start allowing people to see the inside of what we do. You know, to start, we have to start allowing people to really see what officers are doing on, on the street every single day. And the only way to do that is by saying yes, is by saying, you know what, I trust you. Um, I trust you with, with, with this story, with the vision, with this idea. I trust you with our staff. Um, because this is not something that, that is seen every day. You know, it's, it's the pace, it's the sounds, it's the, you know, the chatter on the radio, it's all of these things that's not seen every day. And is it just people don't know? Do you think the community just has no idea? Um, so I think there's a, there's a segment of the, the community that doesn't have any idea. I think there's a 
segment that lives it every single day, that lives it every day. And I think that story is as equally as important to tell as well. Um, you know, I go home to my home. I don't live that every day. Um, we have a, a, a population and a segment of, of, of our beautiful city where that is a daily occurrence. That is, that is people that live there, that's their lives. And so I think that story is important to tell as well. My introduction to you, mm -hmm. I started in November. You started in November. November 26 was yeah. the shooting. Yeah. I mean, do you feel like that just kind of set the tone for your first six months in office? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, it, it did. Um, but I also, too, had to take a step back because it was so easy to get caught in that chaos. But I had to take a step back and say, okay, let's decompress a little bit and let's take a, let's look at the bigger picture. What is it that we are trying to do? Um, it did set, you know, I, I remember my mom calling me and going, she says, are you sure you made the right decision? And I said, yeah, I'm good. Absolutely, I made the right decision. You can do this. I can do this because I'm home. You know, I'm home. There, there is never a sense of chaos. I don't feel like I'm in a chaotic world. You know, as weird as that sounds, I don't feel like the sky is falling. Um, but I have the sense of we need to work, work, work. There's, there's things that need to be done, but we'll, we'll do it together. And that's what makes me feel best about it. That was Durham Police Chief Patrice Andrews. You'll go on more ride-alongs with other members of the Durham PD, hear more about staffing and retention issues, do deep dives with city leaders about cycles of violence and ideas on how to stop them. All of that and more in upcoming episodes. It gets chaotic. And our biggest thing is when the kids hear the gunshots, a lot of the kids, like, they panic. And a lot of our kids come to the windows, a lot of the kids come outside, and I'm just trying to like find a program or something. So when something like that does happen, we already have a plan in place to take the children elsewhere and find something else to do because I just always felt like it's not good for a child to hear gunshots and then as soon as they step outside, they see somebody laying there or they see somebody wounded. And then they have to go to school the next day and schools are not understanding what you know the children have been through the next day and the lashing out and the, the behavior, they just see it as children acting out. So a lot comes into play when gun violence happens in the community. This has been episode one of the audio companion to the WRAL documentary, Durham Under Fire. Follow the doc team on social at WRAL Docs for updates. Remember, you can watch the doc on WRAL's YouTube page. Be sure to like and subscribe. You can find more episodes of the WRAL Doc Companion podcast in this feed. Be sure to follow the show in your favorite podcast app so you don't miss future episodes. For more podcasts from WRAL News and Capital Broadcasting Company, go to WRAL.com and search podcast. This podcast was hosted by me, Kristen Severance. It was produced by Jay Jennings and written and edited by Rachel McCarthy. Mix by Mark Maximoff. Thanks for listening.